Hello, hola, and welcome everybody to another behind the scenes look at another project that I was able to do this month. And uh, this one it was quite a bit of fun, actually. We're going to go shot by shot, sort of breaking down this whole entire short film. It's a one minute short film for the Film Riot one minute short film contest um, or challenge. If you guys have never heard of Film Riot, it is a channel on YouTube, which I highly recommend. They got a bunch of stuff on behind the scenes, uh, learning how to do uh, special effects. They just have a bunch of things um, that as far as education goes for filmmakers, you will be able to get way more education from watching every single video of a film riot channel on YouTube than any film school. Um, of course I am I am a believer actually in film school, but the reason why I'm a believer in film school is because of the connections that you make, not what you learn from film school. Um, when I ended up taking some film classes, I ended up actually almost teaching the classes with the teacher. So that was kind of a frustrating experience for me. And of course I don't consider myself one of the best at all, so that's even more frustrating. Uh, <laughs> that uh, I had to uh, help out a lot, quite a bit in the class uh, with other students that weren't as advanced, um, I guess, to the level where I was. Because at the time when I decided to go into film school for some reason, I don't know why either, um, I was already doing TV commercials and uh, short films and all that other kind of stuff that I did by myself. Um, I had um, already owned two cameras at that point. This was before the DSLR revolution. Um, so I had a Canon XL1 and a Canon XL2, which if some of you out there uh, have ever worked with them, you know that they work with uh, mini DV tapes. And they're a pain in the A to have. I mean, I got closets full right now of just mini DV tapes from old projects. So um, so anyway, so again, this is something that um, I, I don't even know how we got to that part of the conversation. But uh, yeah, you guys will learn a lot from that um, from the Film Riot channel on YouTube if you guys want to go check that out. Um, so they had this uh, contest, this challenge that was for a one-minute short film uh, sponsored by Film uh, by um, Filmstro.com. I apologize, I'm a little bit everywhere today, uh, but sponsored by Filmstro.com, which again, if you guys have not heard of Filmstro.com, I highly suggest you go check them out, especially if you're a filmmaker or editor. Um, this website will make it so much simple for you guys to be able to create music for your projects. Um, back in the day before Filmstro.com, I was going around um, website by website, place by place, trying to find any sort of songs um, for my projects, hoping to God that I would not get a copyright notice on Facebook or YouTube or anywhere else. Um, and that was just painful, just plain painful. Uh, finding the right music and spending so much time. I mean, there, was, there would be times that I would spend days days just looking for music hour after hour after hour after hour just looking for the right song for the project and then the project would take me maybe about four hours to edit so that's how ridiculous it was getting um if you're spending more time looking for music than you are editing your project there's a huge problem right there already so check out filmstroke.com um this video is not sponsored by them i wish it were but they're not showing me any love uh not yet at least so um but yeah, go check them out, filmshow.com. You'll be able to create music right there. Um, they have a bunch of options for different music, different styles, different genres, different moods. Um, and the cool part is that you're able to sort of control the song. So it's not like you're just dropping a song on top of it and it is what it is. Uh, you're able to, um, if I remember correctly, control the pitch, the tempo, um, the, uh, the bass. You're able to control a few things that really... Um, I mean, make a huge difference when it comes to your final project. So this one minute short film, I had about seven days to write, cast and edit. Uh, it took me about a day and a half to edit and I'm going to break it down scene by scene for you. And we're going to take a look at it. Let me make this a little bigger here on the screen so you guys can have an easier look. And, uh... Any other editor out there will, will understand completely. I hate this. Uh, when you're trying to expand your screen, sometimes it becomes impossible to do. It doesn't let you grab it. There we go. There we go. All right. It's a little bigger now. So let's break it down scene by scene. So just like a lot of other movies, you're going to want to start off with your, uh, your master shot um, or your establishing shot. Now, our establishing shot already gives you the time. The location, pretty much, in a sense, it was really dark, and the character. So, time, location, character. 
right away within one shot all at the beginning so let's play that that uh this little scene really quick and take a look at the establishing shot let me rewind that there we go okay so right away moving from the establishing shot to a close-up of her hands. Why? Because the conversation on the phone was really the most important thing going on at this moment. I needed to set up that she was waiting for somebody for a while. Um, and then she's having a conversation with somebody else. So obviously she was having this conversation. He's an hour late. Obviously she's having it with somebody else because she's talking about he is an hour late. Um, her response is, what a jerk. So right away, you know, they're talking about pretty much a guy. Um, so establishing shot, location, character, time. To go on, what is the situation right now at the moment? The situation right now is that this chick has been waiting for an hour uh, for this guy. So, let's keep playing it. And right there, obviously, I don't know if you guys can hear that that well. Um, because I have the microphone facing towards me and not the speakers. Um, but, uh, right there, I put a sound effect where she hears a bottle breaking and some noises. So here's her, her there's, uh, there's her reaction right there. Again, now keep in mind that for a lot of this, we had a lot of other shots planned out. Now, when it came time to edit, because we had to keep it under one minute, um, that made it very complicated. So... Even if we go look at all the raw footage and stuff like that, obviously we did the panning down shots a million times. And I even had to sped it up at the end because even the panning down and up was just too slow. Um, so we go from her walking away shot to what the shot was supposed to be afterwards. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so this was the original shot right here of her walking away. So we almost follow her all the way. Da -da -da -da. Of course, that's probably a shot that I wouldn't have used, but one of these shots right here, maybe. Hey, keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, I wanted, obviously, this shot in the, in the film because I wrote it out and planned it out in my head and, you know, parked the car in a certain kind of spot because I knew that... Um, it was all gonna match together, um, but when it come time, when it came time to edit, I had to cut that scene out just because it was way too long. Um, so that's the sad part. So that's her walking towards her car, and we also had obviously we're we're filming right now in the freezing cold. I mean, it was terrifyingly freezing. Um, so we had a lot of issues right away. Our crane gave us issues. Um, it started, you know, almost just kind of like bouncing a little bit. That's me when we were doing the test shots. Um, so, but yeah, the crane was having all kinds of issues, I think, just because of the cold. Um, the tripod, for some reason, too, it's like the cold almost didn't want to make any of the joints work uh, nicely together. Maybe I got to oil everything up on my equipment again and my crane and my tripod. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we had a couple of difficulties with that. So let's go back to the short film. So here's her walking away shot. Boom, to her getting directly in. Why? I mean, is it okay to cut that out completely? The scene that you, I showed you guys of her walking to the, Yes. I mean, nobody really needs to see her walk all the way to the car. That is a huge um, mistake that a lot of editors and filmmakers make when they're uh, beginner filmmakers. Um, they tend to shoot everything. Uh, so meaning that they want to show the character literally walking from one room to another the whole entire way. When really you could have one character in one bedroom set her phone down. You know, because she's upset about something. And then all of a sudden, randomly, boom, she knocks open her brother's room. You know, and bitches at him because of something. Uh, you don't have to show her walking from her bedroom after she sets her phone down all the way to her brother's room, knocking on the door, pushing it open, and then having that conversation. That is just a lot of wasted time and wasted space that you don't need. So this shot right here almost forced me to have to cut it. You know, I wanted a longer shot. Uh, now that shot was more cinematic, obviously, um, at least in my opinion just because of the headlights, and I wanted to make sure that she walked right in the middle of those headlights. But, um, so yeah, so I tried to keep it, you know, as short as possible. Again, within under one minute, did we lose a lot of storyline from it? Absolutely. Um, doing any kind of short film under one minute is almost impossible. 
Um, because again, a lot of short films just need to have a punchline. Um, if you do a commercial, you guys probably, well, some of you actually, not all of you, but some of you will probably remember the, uh, the Mentos commercials from back in the days. Uh, Mentos, Freshers, fresh is better. Mentos, fresh is better. That one, I don't even know what the hell the words are, but it sounded something like that. Uh, if you look at those commercials, those are all one minute short films. You have the character, something happens to the character. Uh oh, he needs to come up with a solution. Boom, he pops a Mentos in his mouth, he comes up with a solution, punchline. That's it. Um, so, pretty simple, guys. Um, same thing with with a short film, with a one minute short film, you're gonna have to almost have a punchline at the end, and that we found very difficult. So let's continue playing this scene by scene. So let's continue on where she's walking away, and she's saying, "I'm I'm leaving. I hate the dating life." Let's see. Now, of course, if you guys look at all this, her power dies out in the car. She hears the noise right here somewhere. Yep, right there. She hears another noise. Boom, and then all her power dies. Okay, so I mean, if you're looking at the short film from beginning to this point at least, right? So where she starts the car. Supposedly, my goal was really to almost have it seem like it was a horror film. So I wanted to confuse the audience um, just because maybe that's me. I'm not really sure. I know that a lot of filmmakers uh, make short films and make stuff to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to maybe impress the audience or tell them a nice sweet story and entertain them. Um, I feel like sometimes I actually make short films just to piss off audiences. Uh, as funny or as horrible as that might sound, um, again, I, I kind of like, to almost make somebody believe something and then turn it around on them at the last second. Um, now, this is not a great success at it. Um, but again, I almost set it all up like you're watching this. She hears a noise that scares her at the beginning right there. You know, it could be somebody at the park, somebody that's waiting for her. She gets in her car. She hears another noise. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything dies out in her car. Now, right there, it's almost why I dropped the music. So, I don't know if you guys could hear from where I am. Let me move the microphone a little bit this way. So, I don't know if you guys can hear there from where I'm doing the uh, the voice recording. But um, I dropped the music right here because, again, it goes from almost horror style, like, dun, 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 like music, like you don't know what's going to happen, to all of a sudden a comedic moment where the girl is locked inside her car. And then slowly I bring it back up. And then slowly take it back out. So let's continue on with this scene. Now this scene, when we filmed it, I had a bunch of extra shots of her crawling around all over the car, yelling from each window of the car, trying to kick the car window out. Um, we recorded a ton of footage that I was not even able to use at this moment, just again, because... When I did the whole main layout of the short film, the original layout, it ended up coming out to like a three minute long short film. Um, and so that would have gotten literally kicked out of the contest right away. Um, so I had to crop all those scenes out of her going all crazy, which is sad. That's why I cut it to just a scene of the outside of the car, just kind of shaking and moving like that, just for a little bit more of comedic relief, maybe. Um, and now keep in mind that, you know, I set up a, com a camera and my, uh, my friend Brett, the other filmmaker, was filming this scene. Um, but I was trying to push the car myself from the side. So I'm over here at, uh, let's see. I am, da, 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 da. it don't matter. I'm over here on this side all the way to the front of the car just trying to rock it back and forth. And if you guys know how small I am, that's pretty hilarious. Because uh, uh, I didn't put much movement in the car. So, so again, so we go from horror to comedic. And uh, now we actually go to a true story. I mean, obviously, when the short film starts, it's based on a true event. Um, right here, boom, actual 911 phone call. So the audio that you're about to hear is the actual 911 phone call. Again, the 911 phone call was extremely more hilarious than what I had to cut. I had to cut it extremely short and only use parts of the conversation. If you look down here, you can see how the whole entire conversation is cut up into pieces. 
um, just because I didn't have time to put the whole entire thing there, which would have made it obviously funnier um, or more funny. Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, which is I just had no choice. But I cut that out completely, and this is what we had left from the 911 call. So right here is the actual 911 phone call, um, and of course, like I just said, I had to cut it short, um, and. You know, it's the original voice from the 911 phone call, the original operator voice from the 911 phone call. So that, as a sort of creative idea, um, I decided to jump outside of the car and record that conversation from outside of the car. Now, I did have some footage of her actually, you know, acting like she was talking, moving her hands around, upset, you know, covering her mouth, obviously, so that even if, um, even if I was going to put this scene in there, you wouldn't be able to tell that it was her or not her talking. Um, so maybe that was a bad decision at the end of it, you know, to cut out to here. Um, but I didn't think I had enough matching footage of her moving her lips, waiting for the operator to respond and moving her lips again. Um, didn't have many angles except for that one that I just showed you right there. So it would have been really hard to cut together. So I ended up going to the outside. Originally, I had put a bunch of, um, of actual um, news articles on this part so I had news articles popping up everywhere from the actual um, story of the Florida woman getting stuck inside her car um, but again decided to kind of scrap that just because it, uh, it wasn't visually pleasing it was a bunch of crap just being thrown up on the screen um, so at least this way I figured the audience could read a little bit more um, and yeah it was a really sad decision for me to have to cut out the whole entire 911 call because that would have just been even made it more funny um, and it would have actually worked out perfectly for the short film. So let's continue on from there. This when she gets out of her car. Again, remember, she's been waiting for a date this whole time. He's an hour late because he's an a-hole. And here we go. Okay, sorry, I got that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, sorry, I got that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Hey, ready for a date? You almost showed up an hour early. He'd be like savings. Booyah. So, punchline of the whole conversation is that, obviously, daylight savings, she was the one early, he wasn't late. Um, again, not a not a hilarious story. I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys. You know, I can't be sitting here being like, oh, oh, oh this, uh, this short film was uh, hilarious, dude. Uh, no, obviously, there's a lot of things that I missed in it um, that we could have had maybe been more funny or made more sense. Um, I even had another couple of scripts ideas that we could have shot that maybe would have made more sense for a one minute short film. Um, but with this one, again, it's almost like after I wrote it out, I knew what all the shots were going to be. And I kind of wanted to push myself and test it out, you know. Um, now, up to this time, um, the last time that I did a short film personally was maybe about five years ago um, or four years ago. I can't even remember, to be honest with you guys. So this was almost like my test. Um, to see if I still had what it took to do the short films. I've been working on a lot of uh, interviews for clients, a lot of commercial stuff, a lot of promo videos, a lot of Instagram videos for clients. Um, so you kind of tend to lose that, you know, that touch of having to set up a scene and having to give directions to your actors. Um, you tend to lose that if you're not doing it constantly. Um, so that, that was kind of tough, I'm not going to lie, uh, when it came to filming this. Um, again, the hardest and toughest part of filming this whole entire thing was that we were filming in pure dark. Uh, when I went there the night before, the lights out here, let me see, the lights out here, if you can see on the screen on the outside, um, I could have swore were brighter. Um, and then when we showed up that night, they were like flickering a little bit and they weren't that bright. Um, again, I don't have any sort of exterior lighting. I, I do have this lit from the back. You can obviously see the reflection of almost the light right here. Um, but you wouldn't know if that was a street light or what. Um, and then this is the actual light, I believe. Um, I could be wrong. This might be some... No, yeah, actually, I think this is a street... Nope. That is my light, actually. Holy God. So I didn't notice that there before, so that was a mistake, and I already turned in the short film, so... <laughs> Hopefully nobody else will notice. Maybe I'll wait to release this video um, until after they announce the winners, even though, again, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be the top winners on this, but there is six spots, so I'm hoping that maybe number six, number five... Um, kind of makes me feel a little good about myself 
than about the fact that I haven't filmed a short film in so many years. So, um, so anyways, extremely dark everywhere uh, for every single shot, especially all the interior car shots. Those were really hard. Now, if you look over here, you'll be able to see all this smudge right here, right here, pretty much smudge everywhere. I did that on purpose, getting the window dirty. Um, just so that it would give um, a little bit more of um, almost dimension to the scene so that we could see that there's a separation between her um, and the glass. I wanted the, kind of the glass to stand out a little bit, so I grabbed some dirt from the ground and literally rubbed it all over the glass window. Um, that makes for a really good separation of the character inside and outside. Um, so yeah, everything was just dark, guys. Uh, filming exterior shots at night are really, really extremely hard. Um, especially making the lighting seem like, you know, it's parking lot lighting. So you got to take all your lights up high, uh, shine them down on their faces. That's going to create a lot of shadows. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of testing stuff out. Again, we filmed this short film within three hours. So I only had three hours to film the short film. Um, this is all one shot right here. It's not cut in between the middle or anything. It's actually all one shot. Um, now I did cut it here, I believe. Yeah, just because of speed ramp, because I think it goes faster a little bit right there. Da da da, and boom to him. Um, actually, I really don't know why I cut it. I want to believe that that's why I cut it, but I really don't know. Let's move it a little bit this way. Okay, yeah. So it is all one shot. Okay, so it is all one shot. So I really don't know why I cut it right there. Um, may oh okay, it's because at the beginning I was trying to separate his audio. That's why. Um. I was trying to separate the audio from him saying his original lines to everything else. So, and when it comes to this scene, obviously he's got audio. He's about the only audio that it was recorded um, there. Now the problem that we had was um, obviously the car engine um, just wind, massive amounts of wind. Um, the fact that we didn't really want to throw a microphone inside with him, so we were trying to capture. So as I'm moving over, as I move the camera and pan it like this. My audio guy was trying to stay out of the shot, obviously, and have his mic above, um, really to the side. It's more like up here, um, of the frame, you know, capturing his audio. Um, so that didn't come out as good as I wanted to, so we had to go ahead and ADR those clips. Um, I had the actor go ahead and thank God he's, uh, his name is Rick Enrico, and he's, um, which I love that name, by the way, Rick Enrico. Um, and, um, he is also, he, uh, he does music. He plays in a band. Uh, he's a DJ. So luckily, thank God for me, he had microphones at home that he could do an ADR piece really quick for his, um, three different lines. So all his lines are all ADR. They're all recorded in studio. So listen to that. Hey, ready for our date? Hey, ready for our date? I mean, I almost showed up an hour early. I hate daylight savings. Now, of course, that again, the car engine that you hear is, um, it's obviously fake. So let's mute that. Let's mute the car engine really quick and see what happens with just this audio. I mean, I almost showed up an hour early. I hate daylight savings. So that's without the car audio. Let's hear it again. I mean, I almost showed up an hour early. I hate daylight savings. So again, I don't know how well you guys can hear uh, from out there because the microphone's obviously facing my voice and I don't have my computer at full blast right now, but hopefully you guys are getting kind of a hint and obviously it might be a little delayed because by the time the sound um, comes out of the computer speakers and probably hits my chest and then bounces back up to you guys' microphone, it might be a millisecond late. Um, so don't worry about that. Everything is synced up, though, just in case you guys were wondering. So, yeah, so this was a one-minute short film. We only had about three hours to edit. I took about a day and a half. Uh, sorry, we only had about three hours to shoot, um, and I took a day and a half of editing, um, a ton of um, atmosphere noises, guys. I mean, that makes a huge difference, like tremendous difference. I mean, let's expand this, and let's make the short film smaller over here because we need to look at this timeline really quick. So if you're looking at this timeline, let's count them out. Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25, 25, 25. About like 24 shots, let's say. 24 video shots. Now look at the audio. So again, you guys tell me, what do you think is more important for a film? The actual visuals or the actual audio? Um, 
I'm a huge believer in the audio, obviously, and I'll make a whole different video about this because I lost a huge job back in the day um, due to bad audio, due to my sound guy not showing up um, and canceling on me because he was sick. Oh, poor little sick guy had to hold a microphone, and it was so hard for him. So because of that, I lost about 30K. Um, so, of course, he doesn't really care because uh, lazy people don't really care about that kind of stuff. But people that work hard, when we lose 30K, we get pissed off. Um, so that really pissed me off, and I've never forgiven him for that. Um, so anyways, but look at the audio of this, guys. Like, come on. I mean, we can just keep going down, keep going down. All the sound effects, all the atmospheric noises, the room tones. Um... I mean, I got frogs, for example, over here. We got some frogs in this. Uh, for God's sake, I don't even know if you can hear them. Hold on. Yeah, actually, you can hear them in the background going... Um, whatever kind of noises frogs make. So, anyways, my point of this, guys, is that the audio... I mean, way more than 24 clips of audio here, for sure. I mean, a ton of audio. And this is all not audio from... Uh, from the shoot, this is audio that is post-production audio. So you can look at all this green stuff, this room tone, this traffic city number three, night frogs and crickets. Um, all these, all these green ones, these are all final cut audio pieces. So that means that when you go over here and you go all the way to the top, boom, sound effects right there. So this has a list of all kinds of sound effects. Well, thank you very much. Uh, but this has a list of all kinds of sound sound effects that you guys can use for your movies, your short films, your commercials. <laughs> or there you go. If you need to hear more babies screaming. I got a baby at home that cries like that, and I do not need to hear any more of it. So uh, let's not use that clip ever again. Um, okay. Then you also got a clip that sounds like a guy's taking a crap. So uh, you got a bunch of stuff. You got a bunch of clips over here that you can use. Uh, train truck airplane so again you get the point then there's room tones there's all kinds of things gunfire gun rifles everything that you can pretty much imagine and if not of course I suggest I'm um, going to film riot I believe they have a website too not just a YouTube channel but go to film Riot, and they sell sound uh, packages and effect packages for sounds um, again, I believe that they're probably also huge believers in that audio is way more important than the actual uh, visuals of the movie. You know, everybody could forgive a visual. I mean, somebody could look at this, you know, and a professional could look at this and be like, oh, my God, he did such a bad job lighting it. Like, why is it like that? You can hardly see it. La, 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 la. Um, there's a bunch of complaints that professionals like me out there will find when we're looking at short films or even regular films. I mean, I can't even watch a movie anymore uh, without breaking it apart um, and tearing it apart. Every shot, every angle, every panning, uh, the way the actors deliver or don't deliver their lines, the way they look. Um, I can't I can't watch a movie anymore and just enjoy it um, just because I, I, I want to study every single aspect of it as it's going along. So I guarantee there's filmmakers out there that will look at this and will tear it apart. And I do not blame them. I created this. I wrote this. I filmed it with a few friends of mine from Facebook, uh, with another talented filmmaker and photographer. But again, go ahead and break it apart because there's millions of things that went wrong um, that should not have happened. Um, but again, the audience, the regular audience, not another filmmaker, and you do not need to impress other filmmakers for God's sake. You should only be worried about impressing your audience. And if you want to be smarter, worry about impressing your niche audience um, if you want to make a name for yourself don't worry about all of Facebook and all of Instagram and becoming Instagram popular and becoming Facebook famous you don't want that crap um, what you want is a niche audience that will literally buy your stuff uh, so you can go ahead and have a hundred K followers on your fake Instagram that will buy absolutely nothing from you because they don't know you at all and with my 500 followers which obviously I have more than that but if I had only 500 followers I know for a fact that at least 30 of those people are actually going to buy a fiscal product of mine um, so that makes a huge difference guys is find your real audience out there your niche audience um, that's a mistake that's taken me forever to learn that I wish I would have learned when I was younger um, and again even still to this day I Almost ignore that advice because I'm stupid and I want to try to push myself and do all kinds of things and see if one day I can do a short film and the next day I can do some sports videos and the next day I can do a commercial for a retirement home. And yeah, 
it don't work that way if you guys are trying to get to a certain level. Um, so, but if you want to, you know, if you do want to make a living from it, um, I guess I can suggest that because, you know, especially if you live in an area like the Midwest where you're not in California and it's full of, you know, fake filmmakers and all this other, I mean, again, let me correct myself on there. There are a lot of fake filmmakers, um, on, uh, in Michigan, uh, hell get on my Facebook and you'll find a crap ton of filmmakers who all they do is just talk, talk, talk talk um if they spent all their time talking um or writing on facebook instead if they spent all that time actually filming and creating contents then maybe other people might be able to see that they're actually filmmakers um but all they do is talk and talk and talk and talk about their future projects and talk about other filmmakers not doing this and other filmmakers not doing that or other or how actors misbehave um and again it's people that are all reading some sort of article that never really done much filming for themselves um they just complain and complain and complain um so anyway, so you don't want to be that kind of filmmaker in the future. <laughs> you don't just want to be a complaining kind of filmmaker. But you do want to point out the truth um, of the fact. So, And the truth is that this short film, to somebody like me, again, is complete garbage. Uh, even though I made it myself. Uh, I have no problem calling it for what it is. Now, for other people, for the regular audience out there watching it, they might love it. They might definitely forgive all this dark footage and say hey you know what he was being artistic that's the way that it was supposed to be he was being artistic but they will not forgive you ever 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 and they will stop watching your video if you have crappy audio um i promise you that guys that is audio is such an important thing look this is this is my my way of thinking if you're a director in a big movie set i don't care if you're steven spielberg and your audio guy tells everybody to shut the hell up I don't care if you're Steven Spielberg, you better shut the hell up if your audio guy says so. Um, the audio guy really is uh, is monumental in any film uh, process. Now, I wish I could have more audio guys. I wish I could work more with audio guys. We didn't have an audio guy for this. The other filmmaker um, was doing the microphone stuff for me uh, when it came to the shots. Um, but, uh, yeah, we didn't have a sound sound guy for this. I didn't have a sound guy for a ton of the work, almost all the work that I do, I don't have a sound guy, which sucks um, because most clients, I mean, I, I try to explain to a client, well, look, yeah, this this commercial is going to cost you uh, around uh, maybe 10 grand, but uh, I also need to hire a guy that's going to cost me about maybe a thousand bucks to, uh, to record audio. You know, they, they don't understand. They don't get spending a thousand dollars to record audio. I mean, they think they can literally bust out their iPhones, you know. Um, I mean, I've had clients, I've literally had clients that luckily I didn't slap them in the face. Um, but I've had clients that have made comments like, oh man, I, I mean, I, I don't know why, you know, I, I could, I could have just filmed all this with my iPhone. <laughs> I almost want to say to those clients, and of course, excuse my language if you're a young person uh, listening to this, but I want to say to those clients, go fuck yourself. Um, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, you know your business, and that's about all you know. Um, you're probably a better business owner than you are a father or a mother, and that is okay, but concentrate on your business. Don't try to then jump and make little comments like, oh, man, just because my iPhone records 4K, I, th I think I could have shot this because the, 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 the technology in my phone is, is so advanced. That, wow. Guys, come on. Only a moron falls for that 4K crap. Um, now, of course, there's benefits to filming 4K. Um, hell, I say there's more of a benefit for filming 4K interviews than there are movies. Um, so <laughs> just just keep your whole thing cool down on the 4K. It is a waste of time. It is a waste of money um, unless you're a run and gun kind of shooter like I am where all of a sudden you can only get one shot for an interview and then you need to crop in and crop out, crop in, crop out. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for filming. But as far as your computer system, God help you. You better upgrade your computer to the best computer you can find in the market if you want to try to edit 4K footage, especially if you want to try to edit a 30-minute interview um, in 4K. Good luck. Plus, again, the numbers don't lie, and almost no one watches 4K footage on the Internet. Almost no one. Um, so, again, if you're uploading 4K to YouTube, I feel really bad for you. Uh, if you're shooting 4K, about the only thing you should be shooting 4K is if, uh, I don't know. Like I said, for interviews, if you need to cut in and out. Hell, if you're making a movie and you're putting it in the movie theaters, in the movie theaters, um, then, of course, I suggest shooting 4K. You know, at least 2.5K. 
Um, but uh, something, <laughs> you know, something more than 1080 HD because uh, that's going to look really crappy in a, on a movie theater screen. So, but anyways, guys, so going through this whole short film, um, at the end, you guys will be able to see, and sorry for my rant, obviously, um, but uh, we'll take this as an educational experience for everybody. Um, so hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Uh, if you guys think I should change the uh, the kind of style of videos that I'm doing right now um, and put my face more on it so that when I'm bitching, you guys can actually see uh, my funny looking faces. And uh, yeah, that is about it. Ladies and gents, enjoy this one minute short film that you're about to watch from beginning to end. And uh, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a like or not. That is completely up to you. I am not going to force you to do anything unless... You really just, you know, unless you want me to force you to to give it a like, and that would just be weird. So, um, ladies and gents, here we go. Short film, Daylight Savings. Thank you so much, and wish us luck. We'll find out on the 20th of this month. Uh, what month are we in? I don't even know what month. November. We'll find out on November 20th. That is tomorrow um, if we actually want anything or not. So, toodaloo, guys, and enjoy the short film. The emergency. The car will not start. I'm locked inside my car. Nothing electrical works. You should be able to just pull the lock up, even if it's electrical. Okay. All right, I got that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Hey, ready for our date? And I almost showed up an hour early. I hate dayl